Hello. Come on in. Welcome to A Day in My Life with Diabetes. As you can tell, this video is probably going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's something I was a bit hesitant to speak on, so I thought I'd make it more fun, a little bit silly, and just trying to take myself too seriously. So this video will be more stylized, less unfiltered than my usual kind of content. I'll take you through what it's like to have diabetes in a day. Alfred. I'll take you through what it's like to have diabetes in a day, some lessons I've learned, some things that have helped, and I'll also go through some questions and polls that I received on Instagram. <laughs> um, just a disclaimer, I'm a professional in my own right on my diabetes. This is very personal. This is not a recommendation, no prescriptions here. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm just sharing some experience as I have quite a bit in the matter. Do not take my word for anything. This is all experimental, really. And one last thing to note, just a warning. There will be some needles in here and there will be a little bit of blood. It shouldn't last you very long. You should close your eyes and then it'll be over. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll start off the day with waking up. Morning. I've had a bit of a lie-in today and I have a headache and my breathing feels a bit off. So <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm probably a little bit high, but I will take you through it. We've got this as the glucose monitor. So this is the little finger poker we'll need. We have to put a needle in there, if I can. This is the little needle that we'll put into here, if I can. <laughs> so this goes in there like that. You could hear that click, that means it's loaded. There's the needle. Put on the cap. And you can adjust how high up or low down the needle kind of comes out. Um, and this is really, like you have to rotate your fingers. So the way that you adapt as you kind of build up calluses is to do use higher settings, etc., etc. And then before we poke actually, We'll load up the monitor with this strip. So we grab one of these. We put it into the monitor like this. And then the monitor turns on. Just make sure so this is now ready for some blood. Which you can see it's got like a blood thing that comes up on there. Blood drop. <clears throat> This is ready to go. That shoots out. Tiny bit of blood, you can kind of see. And then what I will do is you put the blood on the little black, one of the little black side strips, like so. It will beep and then start loading. Okay, 10.2. That's not horrible. It is a little bit high. The usual or the the normal is to be between four and seven. So that's a little bit high, which kind of explains headaches and issues waking up there today. And now I can, that's how I start my day, based around a number and adjusting accordingly. So I probably, I'm going to do a workout this morning. So probably won't take any insulin before working out because sometimes that can be a bad idea however sometimes I get out of the workout and it's like skyrocketed so mm, yeah I probably won't take any correction I'll go and do the workout and then I will test after the workout it might have gone up it might have gone down depends on the type of workout depends on the length of the workout <laughs> it's really all just a guessing game and based on how I'm feeling right now, I feel like I'm not going to take any insulin. Which isn't very helpful or quantifiable, but it is just one large experiment with my own body most of the time. So that's why we're going. I will take you for that uh, along for that as well. <laughs> oh, good morning. Okay, I'm just going to do a Pilates workout. This one's super gentle. I've done this one before and it's not very strenuous because I just wanted to work out before I shower. But apparently I might actually also be going out bikini tonight for climbing, so a bit of a 
bit of a movement day. I need it. I have been very stiff and sore and this will be a nice little stretch really. I kind of mentioned but the type of workouts you do do impact your blood sugar and also kind of continuous making movement a habit in your day also makes a difference on your insulin sensitivity so you usually tend to need less insulin to achieve the results that it's supposed to. I don't know if that's making sense but it's that it does help. It helps with all your hormones and everything in general and so exercise being a part of your kind of routine with diabetes is helpful. I would recommend it. <laughs> Okay, I'm all done. That was lovely. Um, something I was thinking about was all the different types of exercises I've done over the years. And like I went through a big like weightlifting phase. I tried to get into running over COVID. And I think for me, I really have to enjoy what I'm doing to go through the effort of figuring out how to manage my diabetes with it because all the exercises do impact your diabetes differently. So I really have to love it to wanna like make it work so i really love pilates i really love dancing i like hiking however it always messes with my blood sugar so i avoid it so i haven't really given myself the chance to figure out how it works because it's so difficult i'm going low and then i'm going high and then i'm going like it's just exhausting and i don't it takes away from the enjoyment of being outside and looking at all these cool things so i just i haven't done it very much but yeah particular types of exercise if you love it you'll figure out how it works for you. For me, it's definitely more of the sort of gentle, stretchy movements that I enjoy that kind of add that strength rather than like pure strength or pure endurance. I need a little bit of a combination and that works well with my blood sugars. Okay, let's see what the sugars are at after that. I really need to shower. <laughs> oh God, such palaver. Something I noticed about myself was I used to use sensors, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and I also used to wear an Apple Watch. And I think sometimes having those numbers can be very helpful. But it got to a point with my mental health that I was just living my life by numbers and I didn't like it. Like even it's hard enough like kind of waking up and immediately like having your day, the tone of your day set by whatever blood sugar you're at. It's like a number reason to be like oh you're not doing enough you're not being good enough and so like i stopped wearing my apple watch i stopped using the sensors because it was just so much information the amount of anxiety i got just from wearing them was insane so just an interesting thought that <laughs> maybe <laughs> might be interesting okay i feel like i might be higher which is unusual after exercise what is it 9.8 okay so it's like about the same a little bit lower we're under 10 so that's good again like the usual range is between four and seven but for me if i'm like under 10 under nine i'm pretty happy i'm not gonna like mess with it because i'll just end up going low <laughs> but yeah okay shower time i feel like a human being i will check back in with you guys for the vlog portion of this video at lunchtime but until then please enjoy You've seen closet tours, you've seen what's in my bag tours, so here is the tour of what's in my medicine cabinet. <laughs> Very exciting. So as you saw earlier, we have the glucose monitor, we have the testing strips that go into the glucose monitor, we have the finger poker, and then we have the needles that go into the finger poker. Please note these are all sold separately. Another way of monitoring your glucose is through sensors like this. They stay on your arm for 10 days and continuously send updates of your glucose to your phone. And with those, you also need a transmitter, also sold separately. Next, we have the sharps container. So with these, you put all your old needles or old finger pokers into a safe sharps disposal. And next we have the pens. This is how I administer my insulin. Insulin comes inside these pens. Look, an old needle on there, Brad Kate. So we have one pen, this one is long lasting. So this administers the dose that will release slowly over the course of the day. And then we have this pen with short acting, which will release every time I eat, 
have drinks, have the need for a correction. If my blood sugar is high, I'll take this short acting. The short acting comes in these little individual vials and the long lasting comes in these containers with the pen itself. The pen is disposable each time. For those pens, I use needles. They're so little, they're actually not bad. Just little, little baby needles, awesome. And I don't have it on me, but there are also testing strips you need for ketoacidosis, a whole other thing. I've never had to actually enter that phase, so we're good. And then this terrifies me. It is the glucagon pen. So this is if you're having a really critical low and basically someone injects the fluid that comes in this needle into this vial full of sugar, mixes it around, takes it out and stabs you with it. And this is the kind of thing that they do when you're unconscious. And look at the size of that needle by comparison to my, my little baby one. I, Never want to have this used on me. I never have in 10 years, so very fortunate there. And then the most exciting part of my medicine cabinet is snacks. So all of this stuff is all sold separately. I get to kind of have my pick of choice with what snacks I'd like. And I pay for private healthcare coverage, which cover covers about 80% of the costs for most of this. Some pieces are completely covered, some pieces are not covered at all. But I would say diabetes costs me probably about $500 out of pocket every month, which is probably far less expensive than somewhere like the US and probably quite a bit more expensive than somewhere like the UK. Hello, welcome to Storytime. Tonight's tale will be my diagnosis. Once upon a time, a very, very long time ago, I was 15. I started feeling particularly ill. I was extremely tired. I lost about 50 pounds in weight. I drank about 10 liters of fluids a day. I'd be eating six plus huge meals, bulking like an athlete and still losing weight. I had constant headaches. I was wetting the bed. I didn't want to go to school and I didn't want to dance. And I love to dance. So, I went to the doctors. The doctors told me that I was depressed, so I ended up on antidepressants. Funnily enough, they didn't really help. I then ended up going to the mall with a friend of mine and her mum, who is a nurse. Her mum saw me at the mall drink five bottles of water and go to the washroom three times in the span of half an hour and then fall asleep on the car ride home. She gently suggested that I might get my blood sugars checked. So I did. I went to the lab and then later that evening they phoned up our house and said, you need to go to the emergency room immediately. As you've seen earlier, the normal sugar levels are between four and seven and my lab results were at 22. By the time I'd gotten to the hospital, they were at 46. Not to brag, but the doctor was quite impressed that I was still conscious. The highest level of sugars that he'd ever seen were 50 and that person was in a coma and had been seizing. And here I was, a little underweight 15 year old and I was just a bit tired and thirsty. We then spent that weekend going through all of the motions, learning how to be diabetic and all the different facts and fun bits that come along with it. My mum and her dad helped join me. I now have to administer insulin and monitor my blood sugar to prevent highs and lows. The symptoms of which include, and are not limited to, shaking, sweating, dizziness, grumpiness, memory loss, weight loss, weight gain, hunger, thirst, fatigue, I could go on. The long-term impacts can include nerve damage, blindness, vascular damage, and heart issues. So hopefully not anything to look forward to there. I now have to check my blood sugar and monitor things constantly. I check my blood sugar when I wake up. I check my blood sugar before I eat. I check my blood sugar after I eat, before I exercise, after I exercise, when I'm sick, depending on my cycle and even if I'm just feeling the slightest bit off. Hello, it is lunchtime. I realise I didn't talk about this earlier, but I tend not to eat breakfast about five years ago in my diabetic journey. I heard a lot of talk about intermittent fasting and diabetics can have, depending on like nighttime, daytime, different hormones, they can kind of have what people with dementia have, and I don't remember what it's called, but it's kind of like a, is it like sunrise effect or something with their insulin? So if I eat something in the morning, I tend to go really high and then I'm useless. <laughs> so I just usually avoid eating breakfast. However, 
If I'm really, really, really hungry, I will. But yeah, if I'm hungry, I'll eat. This isn't gonna be a video going into the science of intermittent fasting. Uh, do your own research. Most of the stuff that I will talk about of habits that I've picked up, they are self-researched. So I don't recommend like doing or jumping into any of this and be like, <laughs> perfect, no. Listen to your body as well. Like even I just said, like if I'm really, really hungry in the morning, I'll eat breakfast. Today for breakfast, oh, it's not breakfast, it's lunch. Um, today I'm thinking I might end up eating out tonight. So I'm gonna try and get in quite a few vegetables now. And yeah, let's make some lunch. Okay, I ended up with some asparagus, some broccolini, and then I've also done some pierogies and vegan nuggets. The way that I eat is very much curated to me, and I'll talk a bit more about this later, but um, fiber's a huge piece. I'll show you how we count the carbs later. So yeah, those are just cooking now. Definitely not a particularly impressive meal, but that was sort of intentional. This is really my, this is my lazy go-to, can't be bothered to cook meal. So that's what we're having today. I would have liked to have cooked something probably a little bit more impressive. <laughs> But we're just gonna, we're gonna leave it, make it easy. I find making this video quite stressful, so I'm just making it as easy on myself as possible. So yeah, this is certainly not meal inspiration. Okay, so now is the pre-lunchtime check. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'm at 7.4. Um, so now the food is in the oven, it's cooking, it's going to be in there for about 20 minutes. So I'm probably just going to take my insulin now because insulin, the fast acting doesn't take effect immediately. So if I take it a little bit before, it does help. I'm also out of insulin in this little fast acting pen. So I thought I'd show you how it changes. So you take it out. That's the empty vial. We have a new vial. Ooh. Slide that in there, and then it just goes in and attaches, and now we're good. And then we'll put on a new needle. So these are the little baby ones. And you just do this, slide it on, put a little safety on it, take that off. And then what you want to do is kind of test the needle and make sure that it's working. So you round up to about two units. Just put it back in the cap and see if... Yeah, okay, perfect. So that's working. Awesome. Okay, and then for insulin for meals. <laughs> you have to calculate how many carbohydrates are going to be in your meal. So my mum actually threw away the, what's it called? The boxes for the stuff that's in the freezer. Vegetables, like the greens, we're doing asparagus and broccoli. That's actually pretty neutral. That will just add fiber to the meal. The chicken nuggets have some breaded coating on them and then the meat's also pretty neutral and then the pierogies is potatoes. So that's very starchy and carbohydrate-y. So I'll kind of show you an example. Here I have some crackers. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but you'll look here and we'll find the carbohydrates. Okay, so for six crackers, as we see here, for six crackers, there's 20 grams of carbs. Then we'll subtract the fiber. So fiber detracts from carbohydrates. So there's about 17 grams of carbs in this. Then you work with your doctor to figure out what your ratios of insulin to carbohydrates are. For example, mine changes throughout the day. So my ratio at lunch is going to be different than in the evening. And sometimes I like to play around with it a little bit. Depending on what I'm eating, I'll take some of it at the beginning and then some of it when I'm finished the meal. And then sometimes it's just all in one. And if I know something's going to make me go like this, so it <laughs> depends on the quality of your food. And I know people talk about that glucose release and that sort of thing. So I can tell from experience the obviously I don't have a box or a count, a specific like package for the vegetables. Um, but I can say from experience that meal is probably about uh, 60 carbs, maybe 50, 60. 
And so I'm going to take 10 units of insulin. That sounds wrong. That, okay. It's really weird to have to think about it. It's very intuitive now. So trying to calculate and like explain myself <laughs> is quite difficult. Okay, I've got four pierogies, three chicken, three chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's probably like 60. And then with all the fiber in there, it's probably like 50. My ratio in the lunchtime is about one to six. So eight to 10 units. I'm gonna do nine. Very scientific, whoops. If you're a fellow diabetic, please do not judge me. I'm way more intuitive than I should be with my diabetes. Oh, I didn't show you. This is on my leg right now. I've just given myself 10 units. I'm gonna inject into the skin like that. And then that will come out. All done. Easy peasy. I tend to stick with injecting in my legs and my arms. I don't like doing my stomach and those are kind of the three recommended sites. Kind of bum anywhere there's a little bit of extra fat helps. Um, I tend to avoid my stomach and then I'll just kind of do legs and arms. I know my one friend has diabetes and they just cringe every time I inject in my arm because that's their like no spot. Whereas for me, it's the stomach. Every time I see them do it in their stomach, I'm like, Bleh. but yeah, now we wait for the food to be ready. Okay, it's now time to eat. Full plate. Um, I tend to eat the fibrous vegetables first. I eat mostly plant-based and this has made a big difference in my diabetes. I, tend, I know people say that the plant-based diet is higher in carbs and sugar. That's if you're eating a lot of crap, but it's so high in fiber that it helps like the fiber, the reason we subtract it from the carbohydrates, it all, it does make a difference with how your body processes carbs. So I like to have higher fiber meals. And yeah, I like to start by eating all the fiber first and then I'll kind of go into the other stuff. The only thing <laughs> that I'm just thinking as I look at this big plate is I already gave myself insulin, which is fine. But if I don't finish this, or if I go back for seconds, I then have to think about it again. And that's something I always envy people when they can just kind of not finish their plate, or if they just go back for seconds, they don't have to think about it. And that's the biggest piece of envy. I'm like, oh, you can just go and eat without thinking about it. You can just not eat and think, not think about it. That's where my envy comes in. But yeah, now we're gonna eat. <laughs> I will check in with you guys later. Okay, I'm just getting ready to go climb with Keenan, so that means packing. Actually, I've already got some in here, but like lots of snacks. <laughs> just in case. Okay, I'm about to go to the gym, so I need to check my sugars before driving because I had to sign a form when I wanted to get my learner's permit as a kid or as a teenager, and they made me sign a form that said I had to be above five if I was going to drive. Five to drive. <laughs> me. <laughs> ah! 3.6. Okay, so we're just gonna chill in the car for a little bit. Have some snacks. Have some sugar. And then try again. One good thing about being low is it's like you get a little reward for doing so or good. You're trying so hard, have a treat. You know? Ugh. These are very sour compared to the last ones. There's quite a big variation today. 10.2, 3.6, that's quite a big change hmm. okay we're good to go now I'm allowed to drive only running a little bit late it's fine okay I literally had to pull over to show you this but someone is paragliding it is January 5th and someone is out paragliding that is 
impressive dedication. Okay, I thought I was going to be a bit late, but as I was driving, Keenan said they were changing the time to 15 minutes later. So I'm actually a little bit early, which works because now I can check my blood sugar before going in. I don't really like talking to the camera yet in public, like when people can see me. So I'm just going to check my sugars again. It's been about half an hour since I had that candy. I feel a bit rough. Like I just feel a bit drowsy and like a sugar high kind of thing. And that might just be from having sugar or I might be high. I don't know. Either way, I feel like this workout is going to be challenging, shall we say. So we're just doing this again. Gosh. Okay. If you can see that, we're at 9.1, which is a big swing in half an hour. So I can like feel a headache starting in the back of my my head. Oh. I already get a little bit stressed when I go climbing because sometimes it's not very enjoyable and I use it as like a reason to beat myself up. So I don't go very often. Oh. Now I just need to think, should I take some sugar and potentially go low while working out or do I leave it and kind of not feel great? Mm. I don't know what to do. Okay, this is also a good example to try. I try and limit the decisions that I have to make every day because there's so much that goes into this. It's so much mental energy. Okay, it's about five. You know what? I don't know how long we're going to be here. We're usually here for a while. So what I'm going to do is take my long lasting. So this one I take once every day at 6.30. I take 17 units. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, nothing is going right. Okay, so this pen is almost empty as well. So I have 12 units right now. Um, I have 12 units of this. So when I get home after working out, I'm gonna take another five units. But for now, we're just gonna take the 12. Oh my God, what a disaster. And that one hurt a little bit. Ew. So yeah, I'll take those 12 units out of 17 and take the 17 later or the rest of them later. And then for my sugars right now, you know what, that's a really big jump. That's like 66 in about a half an hour. So maybe I will just take like a unit. I'll take a unit of un insulin. For me, it's supposed to be one unit corrects and brings me down two. So if I stayed at nine, I have a feeling it's gonna kind of keep creeping up. But if I stayed at nine, it would take me down to seven. And if I'm working out, I might take this one unit dose correction and then crash again. Okay, so, but if that happens, I will let you know. But yeah, I'll take the one unit for correction now. Ow, that one also hurts. <laughs> oh, I might cry at Keenan later. <laughs> He'll show up and I'll just be like, it is so hard. I hate having diabetes. Emotional state and what is it? Like facilities are impacted by diabetes for sure. Get a lot more emotional or oh, that one really hurts. Grumpy or upset if my blood sugars are out of whack. Okay, wish me luck. The way that my sugars have been today are completely normal for me. Like it's always something to think about, but I think it's honestly funny how like perfectly imperfect they've been today the day that i've chosen to film them couldn't have planned this but they've just been a bit all over the place which is fine normal tiring yeah couldn't have planned this if i tried <laughs> Do a front flip. OK, 
Okay, I just finished. Sorry, the quality of this is going to be horrendous due to lighting. But we're about to drive. So I started climbing at 11.8. I didn't take any insulin after that, apart from that one unit before. So now, oh, you'll see what we're at. Can't see anything. Okay, 12, so we basically remained the same throughout, so that's fine. It actually felt like a pretty good session, <laughs> despite how wound up I was beforehand. So now I'm just going to take maybe two units now before I drive, and then by the time I get home... Ow! Okay. By the time I get home... <laughs> Hopefully it'll be a little bit better. Yeah, so hopefully by the time I get home, I need to remember to take that other few units. Need to. Okay. Ow! All right, we're ready to go. Hello, this is going to be a little interlude. So before I made this video, I put some polls and questions up on my Instagram page and I'm just going to go through the answers I got with you guys. So I did a few kind of true or false questions, just sort of getting the general perception of type 1 diabetes for myself really, but I thought I could also go through them. And then I also asked if anyone had any specific questions, so I'll go through those as well. So the first question I asked was true or false, type 1 diabetes can be managed through lifestyle. So it looks like 55% said true, 45% said false. What an interesting, interesting question. I think that one was the biggest, yeah, that one was definitely the, the closest tie. So can it be managed through lifestyle? I think, honestly, yes. <laughs> um, but I say that hesitantly. Both, all of these questions were kind of both true and false, but for type 1 diabetes to be managed through lifestyle. I tried like going keto and paleo when I was younger because they're so low carb in diet and so I think they work. You don't have to take a lot of insulin for it. However, when I was doing either of those diets, um, I was so hungry and my energy was so low. You need, like blanket statement, but most people need carbohydrates for energy and to survive. You need like those carbs, those fats, those proteins. You need all of those to mix together um, and also there's a lot to be said for those diets and they work for different people for different reasons so I'm not saying don't do it and I'm not saying do it but um, look into them for yourself if you need to. For example I know with the keto diet I think it's Dr Tim Spector he developed it's called the fatty muffin test and it basically it's a muffin that you take and you do blood work through it. I could be getting this completely wrong <laughs> but you basically see how well your body responds to the breakdown of fats and that is an indicator of whether the ketogenic diet would work for you or not. It's not for everyone and honestly I wouldn't, like personally, I wouldn't recommend it. I was so hungry and low energy and it was just never satiating so I'm sure it could be managed through lifestyle and again I think it's that, that point of like whether you want to or not because I would rather have like some potatoes and bread. I like a more well-balanced whole food diet. I don't think cutting out a specific food group is a good idea and carbohydrates is the food group that is impacted with diabetes. So yes and no. <laughs> if you wanna to go to extreme measures, I'm sure it could be. If you don't, you still need to take insulin or some medication in order to help or in order to manage it would be my answer. Please don't come for me for any of this. <laughs> The second question I asked is, true or false, sugar and carbohydrates are the same thing. So 23% of you said true, 77% said false. Again, they're both kind of right. Sugar in its purest form is obviously different. Carbohydrates are like a bigger food group. Um, but sugar and carbohydrates in your body, once the carbohydrates themselves are ingested, they break down to the same thing into glucose in your body. So they are kind of the same thing. That's what I look at. I wouldn't look at the sugar content on a nutrition packet, I would look at the carbohydrates because that's the glucose indicator. 
I hope that makes sense. And the last true or false question I had is type 1 diabetes only impacts your insulin and glucose levels. So 8% of you said true for that one, 92% said false. On a very, very direct line of thinking, technically, yes. However, if your insulin or glucose are even slightly off, as it is prone to do with diabetes, it will impact your other hormone levels, such as your cortisol, your melatonin. It can impact your estrogen and progesterone and stuff like that. I think I went to a diabetes educator and she literally said to me, she was like, oh, um, there's not been any studies done on it because, you know, women. But you should look at studying what your insulin like sensitivity is during different times of your cycle. <laughs> so your cycle can impact your insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance, etc., etc. So it's never like just your insulin or your... I know a big one is also leptin. Leptin? But I'm pretty sure leptin... Leptin? I'm not sure how it works. It's something to do with your fat cells and transmitting the information of being full. <laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> but that one's hugely impacted and I notice that a lot with like high highs or lows. You get so hungry because different levels are all askew in your body. And then I had some questions. So one of the questions is how different is it to type two? I only know people with type two and know nothing about type one. Okay, so type one is you are insulin deficient. You do not produce insulin. Your pancreas no longer produces um, insulin. Type two is you are insulin resistant. So that's usually, and I, think this is a more like blanket understanding and there are different types of type 2 and type 1 and all of that but um, usually type 2 I think is more like your pancreas gets exhausted by overproducing insulin so you'll kind of overproduce insulin and then your body won't be as receptive to it so it won't be as efficient and you'll be more insulin resistant and kind of like insulin tired I guess like your pancreas is tired and I think that's more what type two is. Another question is what a good day or a bad day look like? I think a good day for me is kind of just being within range <laughs> and not having to think about it as much, just kind of like it working. I mean, it, when I'm, I, I respond to insulin appropriately, when I respond to glucose appropriately, when it all just sort of like fits in the box and it's like I'm not thinking about other external factors that could be impacting diabetes and a bad day for me is swinging. If I'm going high, low, high, low, it means I'm either super insulin sensitive in that day or super insulin resistant or I'm super sugar sensitive or super sugar resistant. And those days are hard because it's just like the swinging knocks me out. <laughs> Another question is what's the hardest challenge that comes with diabetes? I think kind of living I found it's more the mental aspect of living life with kind of by numbers and by these rules um, and also other people's perceptions has been quite challenging. Having to wake up and kind of have your day dictated or the start of your day dictated by number is quite challenging and then also having to count all the numbers, having to look at all your numbers, it's just like living my life around numbers is very challenging when I am more of a woo-woo person so having to kind of really have something so quantity driven is a challenge and then yeah people's perceptions is hard and having the confidence to take up space and actually say no you know what I need a, I have different needs I have to look after myself slightly differently I have to get more rest I have to say no to things because I know if I don't my tired looks very different and just that extra care that I have had to, I mean, it's a good thing as well. I've had to put a lot of extra care into my body than maybe a lot of people my age growing up, especially with the young 20s and the late teens kind of drinking and exploring and blah, blah, blah. It's like a little bit of an extra consideration. And another one is what's a blessing in disguise that came with being diagnosed? I like that one. Mm, I think one of them is the opportunity to really get to know my body and have to be super in tune with my body. It's kind of like a superpower to be able to just sort of like tell this is what's happening on a like cellular level in my body. It's kind of like a superpower. Um, and another blessing is you really get to see like a lot of good in people, which is lovely in this day and age. I think getting to see 
people's kindness and thoughtfulness towards you and also just people's curiosity it's nice to engage in conversation and learning and open dialogue and it's yeah i think you just get to see a lot of really good in people another question uh what are my favorite snacks and sweets to help <laughs> i love usually kind of go for the gummies i'm not huge if i have a lot of juice i get a bit of an upset stomach so i don't really have juice too much um yeah usually kind of the sour gummies and sweets and stuff like that another question i got was hey google how do i get rid and this is my friend who has diabetes and unfortunately there is no cure yet maybe in my lifetime <laughs> and another thing another comment that was made was anything that impacts you your story is important to anyone with or without diabetes so i just want to say thank you i love you this whole video is in response to that your support was very much appreciated thank you <laughs> and the last question i had was how do you take care of your mental health <laughs> great question i'm still figuring it out I think I really prioritise rest and like the baseline. I know doc people will kind of take the mickey out of doctors for not taking them seriously and I will agree with that because I literally got told I was depressed when I had diabetes. <laughs> got diagnosed with depression instead of diabetes so I understand that but I also think for me looking after those baseline physical things makes such a difference. Did I rest enough? Have I drank enough water? Have I been eating whole foods? Did I get some exercise? Have I been outside today? Like the very basics that doctors will kind of prescribe maybe sometimes without real consideration. Those are the pieces that they do help my mental health a lot. I go to therapy, I talk about it. I have a lot of people around me who know enough about it and have been through it with me, so they're very supportive. That helps when I'm really struggling. And I mean, honestly, you've seen it in this video and you'll probably see it again, it's like that. I just sort of let myself feel it, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating, but it also passes quite quickly because it fixes itself but oh my goodness it's that's why I also find the swinging days the hardest when nothing is going right either end it's mentally tiring as well as physically so when I have like a low that's gonna last me half an hour I'm frustrated I let myself feel frustrated and just sort of like either laugh it off or just get a bit agitated and sit there grumpily eating my my sugars you know it's it passes quickly and I think if I don't let myself feel it I always try to be so perfect with it and even when I was diagnosed my friend who also has it theirs is um as a result of having cystic fibrosis so they had it as like a secondary thing and so when I got diagnosed I was like you know what it's not that bad it's not that bad and I did not process the thing that this huge thing had happened to me it wasn't probably until two or three years later that it sunk in and I was like oh and then might have been what some might call off the rails was not looking after myself because I just hadn't like felt anything about it for so long so that's a big one it's just letting yourself feel it it's frustrating here's what it is but yeah baseline looking after myself therapy talking to people okay thank you for coming to my ted talk this has been the q a portion of this video and now we will get back to dinner time okay about to have dinner um i'm not that hungry after climbing so I think I might just do like a very basic beans on toast type situation. So I took those correction units. I'm home now. See if they did anything. Okay, cool. So we're back down to 9.7. So those correction units are probably still active. So I might take a unit less for my dinner. And I did take the last five units of my long lasting. So. Make some dinner now. Okay, I'm just having my dinner, and I also am having one of these. It's a diet ginger ale. So there are a few things that I personally just never have. And that's like a very blanket statement. And obviously like sometimes with flexibility, I will, but there are just a few things that are just not worth the havoc they wreak on my blood sugar. So one of them is like pop, unless it's zero sugar in it. And another one, 
probably can count on one hand the amount of times I drink in a year, just never very often. What else? Don't usually have candy for fun, <laughs> but I have it when it's a necessity. But yeah, there's like a few things like that as I just picked it up, I was like, oh, I never have pop. I don't drink, I don't have a few things because it's just not worth it, but yeah. Another fun fact. I didn't realize there are new Doctor Who specials. <laughs> So I'm settling in for that with the night. That was my, oh, that was my tumbly years. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm mid episode, it's very good, but I think I'm low. So let's check. Low, I tend to get a little bit tight in the chest, a little bit shaky. And there's like a swooping sensation in my head rather than my chest, which is more high. Out of breath for no reason. <laughs> mm. Okay, I'm 4.2, which is quite a drop in the last hour since getting home and having dinner. So I'm gonna assume I'm on a downward trajectory and I'm gonna have an ice cream for dessert and hope that it kind of stabilizes. <laughs> 4.2 is just on the cusp, so we're fine. But because of the change, I'm thinking that it's been a bit of a, a big down. I don't know if that makes sense. So now I can. And continuing the Doctor Who marathon. I am sweating. I started this morning 10.2 and I'm ending this evening at 1.9. That's insane. Sugar now. Occasionally this happens where it just It's bloody. Oops. Blood on the... Okay, we're good. I want some juice or something different because that's not, not doing it for me. This is a common sight with diabetes. I have many more snacks. Um, when I go low, my memory and speech <laughs> goes awry. But anyways, my memory and um, you get really hungry, you get quite shaky and clumsy so I tend to kind of like stumble and my dexterity goes awry etc etc but anyways <laughs> I will check in with you guys when I get my sugars back up to normal but if I forget as might be um common this will be the end of the diabetes day I will check before I go to bed and make sure that I'm all good to sleep Sleep does help, and sleep also lowers your blood sugar. Not a lot, but you'll tend to go to bed higher and wake up lower, and that's probably a hey, sleep. Probably water that I'll drink, and also just like pa passage of time. <laughs> this is the end of the vlog portion. Thank you for watching. I hope this is a little bit insight, a little bit of insight of what diabetes looks like. It's not always awesome. It doesn't really get in the way. I think you can do anything. The only thing that I was told when I was diagnosed <laughs> that I couldn't do was be a pilot. But other than that, 
anything is possible. If you're watching this with diabetes, you can do anything. It will just take a little bit of work and a little bit of adjustment. And I 100% believe in you. <laughs> Anything's possible. And there's also an element of what do you want to do? I think. Like, do you want to do that? Is that going to make you happy? Is that going to make you miserable? Is it worth it? Like, I was talking about pop. <laughs> That's a pretty easy sacrifice. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot of diet options. So, why not? Um, there's that clumsiness coming in. But yeah. Do you want to do it? Like, I've talked about before that I work a four-day work week instead of a five. That just makes my life easier. <laughs> um... I don't want to work a five day work week and exhaust myself and just be tired all weekend. I want to have at least like a day to unwind, recoup. Today is my Friday. Today is Friday so I've had today to kind of unwind and I, I didn't, obviously this wasn't a vlog style so I didn't take you long but I didn't do too much. I went and, went and worked out with Keenan and then I watched some TV. I had a sleep, I had a lay-in, so there's lots to be said, there's lots of discussion I'm sure, but oh fuck, I forgot where I was going with this, yeah, you can do anything, check in with yourself, do you want to do this thing, <laughs> is it good for you, and just takes a little bit of work, just takes a little bit of extra, a little bit of work that people without diabetes don't have to think about. And we can envy them, but they usually are the ones who support us and help us out, so. <laughs> Can't stop you. I hope this video is a little bit insightful to those who don't have diabetes, and maybe those who do have diabetes, and I hope it was. Maybe a little bit of just kind of like reassurance to those who do have diabetes. I mean, my, my sugars were not perfect today <laughs> by any stretch, and they weren't terrible either. This was a pretty functional day for me, between like that low and those highs this is pretty functional it's when i go probably higher than 15 i need to take a break i need to have a little bit of time to recuperate that is also another thing just to share <laughs> i'm just waffling at this point but um oh my god i need to eat before i do all this talking get my butt to grab mm. Way better. The nice thing with diabetes, oh, you can see I'm red from the heat and the sweating. <laughs> this is me low. Um, yeah. I have to laugh, otherwise I'll cry. <laughs> mm. Good thing with diabetes is if I'm low or if I'm high, it's a pretty quick fix. Like, I'll kind of feel crap until it's fixed and then I'll feel normal. The only times where I really, like, I need a day is when I'm seesawing all day. I'm useless. I am not a happy bunny and that is when I will literally be like, okay, I need a, a day off and just diabetes. I saw a talk, a, a talker once, a professional speaker, inspirational speaker and he had diabetes and he was talking about it. And he called it his designated diabetes day or diabetes depression day. And he would just like take insulin and have ice cream. That was the way he spoke about it. He was quite funny. So it's probably a bit of a joke, but <laughs> yeah, generally it fixes itself and you kind of feel better quite quickly. Other times when it's seesawing, less so. Enough of me waffling. Um, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you. I appreciate the time that someone has put, that you've put into this with watching, learning, and listening about diabetes. Um, I hope you liked it. It was a bit of a different video. If you did, let me know what you thought. I would love the comments and feedback on this one because it was a bit different. Um, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, all that cheeky jazz. And I will see you next Tuesday for probably a little bit more normal of a vlog for me. 